Good morning. Trying to get last minute stuff taken care of before we start here. Okay. Okay. All right, I think we got that taken care of. Okay, good, good. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Sew Together Tuesday. Very excited everyone's here. We're going to wait just a few minutes, of course, you know, let people show up. Come and join us. I'm Teresa Coates. I'm the National Educator for Shannon Fabrics. And today we are back again. But today is a little bit different. It's very exciting. So we have a new studio. So basically, we've talked about it for the last couple of weeks, is that we have a room upstairs in our loft here in L.A that we have converted into a new video studio for me. So um, this is great. So we have a place to actually do the videos. Um, and uh, what was that? Can I, can I do a little? Oh, yeah, yeah, around? yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. So yeah, so this is our, our crazy little loft. We built a little studio up here so that I can work in one place and do videos in another. I'm really excited about it. I think it's gonna be awesome. Um, so it's super cool. I have more of my fabric out. If you want to like do a slow pan down here, this isn't even all my fabric, but um, I have a bunch of different stuff. So we'll have a lot of stuff that we can talk about and sort of go over different fabrics. And we're probably going to do that um, in a few weeks, maybe in July sometime, that we'll do one where we actually talk about the different uh, types of Lux Cuddle that we have. We've had a few questions about that. So um, now I have access to a lot more of my stuff, which is great. I got to rearrange things a little bit. I'll probably keep rearranging things a little bit till I get it figured out. Um, but I'm really excited to be in this space and be able to have a better studio. So, um, so thanks to Hawk for doing that. He spent a lot of time over the last week um, trying to get this all ready and building cabinets and tables. And he built this, this um, I don't know, workstation, I guess you'd call it for me. So um, that's been super fun. So I'll end up blogging about it at some point. Um, and when I do, I'll let you guys know and then you could read about it. Um, but for now, it was just a hurry, hurry, hurry. We got to get this done because we wanted to get it done for today. So um, we're at a point that we can actually use it. I'm very excited about that. So, um, so anyway, so today we're going to do the Nutty Nag. It's called from um, Rustic Horseshoe. So I'm going to take it out because the shine is often a pain here because of the lights. Okay, so I'm gonna take that out so you can see it. So this is the little horse we're gonna do. Rustic Horseshoe is a brand um, run by, or owned, operated, whatever, by a lady, uh, I think her name is Rena, if I remember correctly, and she is in Arizona. So I found this when I was at a quilt shop um, in Cottonwood, Arizona called Quilter's Quarters. And I had taught there like a year and a half ago or so and I found this pattern and I really liked it. And then I never sewed it up and I thought, you know what, we need a reason to do it. So this is it, we're gonna make this guy today. I made a version over the weekend um, that is this one up here. Okay, this is cute little, it was gonna be a unicorn but I never put his horn on. So he's just uh, a white horse, I guess with purple, purple mane. So super cute. Put him together this weekend, learned a bunch about sewing with him, and then today we're gonna do a bunch more, okay? Super cute. So I'll talk to you more about um, how I put that together and how we're gonna do this new one, or another one today. We're gonna use totally different fabric, but I wanna show you a couple of her other patterns. Let's see, so we can, she sent me some. We, so as a company, we started using them, I think it was last fall for Quilt Market, and we made the little ride on horses, which you can find places. So here's a little, a little giraffe which is super cute and uses our giraffe print, which is adorable. And then we have these little ride-on guys that she makes, and she makes a bunch of these. Um, so like here's the llama, there's also a kangaroo, a horse, and then a little horse purse. Okay, but these little, these little ride-on toys are super cute. So the biggest thing is you need to get like the broomstick handle and um, but she has great pattern instructions. We did a bunch of these. If you look at our Facebook page, you'll find pictures from last market. Um, I believe that was um, for the fall market. Ellen will know. Um, Ellen's smart like that. So she took pictures of it and we have a bunch of them. So you can find pictures of how those turned out. Um, Gail made them for us. 
and they turned out awesome. They're super duper cute. So today we're doing just the little toy, okay, the little nutty nag, and that's what we're doing today. So check out her, um, her patterns. They're available at her website, which is uh, Rustic Horseshoe. Let me see if I can find a place to put those. Okay, so rustichorseshoe.com is her website. She is nice enough to give us 30% off for this pattern, okay? So if you order from her website, you can get the PDF of the nutty nag for 30% off, but you have to use the coupon code, and the coupon code is SHANNON30. That was a little bit of a question in my head if you saw that look. <laughs> so it's Shannon30. Ellen will post it. Um, it's at Rustic Horseshoe. So if you go over to her site, you can buy the pattern too and get it on sale. So the important thing to remember though is you need to buy just that pattern with the coupon code. Okay, you can go back and purchase her other patterns in a different sale, but to get that coupon code, you have to do it through just the Nutty Nag. Okay, so um, there was some confusion about how that worked. That's how it works. Okay, um, all right. So today we're doing it with, um, oh, so make sure that you leave your city and state. Sorry, city and state, leave it. We will give away a kit to make this same thing. Okay, we're gonna give away two of those, one today, one tomorrow. We'll be back again tomorrow to finish this up. We're gonna do as much as we can today and then we'll come back and finish it. Uh, but we'll, you'll win a kit to put together a horse. So you'll get the fabric, the stuffing, and then the eyes, okay? And that's what we'll be giving away today and tomorrow. So I'm kind of excited about that. It's um, a super cute little old project. So this is also one, um, I had someone ask me if I had enlarged the pattern, and this one I did not. So the first time I always do it the right size, um, or the intended size, and um, see how it works out. This is one that you could totally enlarge, and you'd be totally, yeah, absolutely fine. So um, super cute, and I'm doing things a little bit different, and I'll talk through that today, um, because that's what I do. <laughs> I put it together the way they asked me to and then I'm like, ah, maybe I want to do it this way. So that's what we're going to do. So I've pre-cut a bunch of the fabric, but we're going to cut out a little bit more today. So today we're using this, um, it's called Pony, um, which is this really nice, it's a Lux Cuddle um, super plush one. And you can see here how long those fibers are. This is an interesting one. It's a little bit like our velvet in that it's a really dense pile. And um, so it's weirdly not quite as messy as some of the other ones. Um, it's very interesting because all the fabrics sort of vary on how, how they work. So we're using the Pony and this one, which I think, I'm gonna say it's caramel and I could very well be wrong. Um, off the top of my head, I, I might be wrong on that one. So um, this one and then uh, the chocolate of the C3 as well. Okay, so we use those three fabrics for this. You're gonna need um, fabric for the body, for the muzzle, and then for the feet. So in this one, so if we look at her pattern, she did um, a little applique that you can do with another layer of it. I'm not gonna do that today, but you're absolutely welcome to do that too. So I chose to do these in one color and this in a different, okay? So it really is just personal choice on what you wanna do. These are actually, all of these pieces fit on the sweet strips too. We talked about that recently, how we have these new sweet strips coming out and we've done sweet strips before, but we have a whole bunch of them. I have some of them like tucked in here. Okay, so they're the little 10 inch strips. Okay, so each one of these pieces are no bigger than this. So if you buy the sweet strips, you can totally use these to put them together too, which is kind of fun. And we have some that are like five packs, so it has all the coordinating fabrics. Um, so it'd be an easy way to put together um, fabric choices if you wanted to. Let's see if I can get that back in there. All right. Okay, so those are the fabrics that I chose today. All right, and I've got a bunch of stuff cut out, but we're gonna cut some more. So I'm gonna move this over here. Um, I also wanted to tell you, there's a couple of stores that I wanted to mention. One is Inspire to Sew. That's in Cedar Rapids. It's inspiredtosew.com. Um, they're in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and they're having a really good sale on Cuddle right now. Um, and I was originally supposed to go out and teach there, and then I wasn't able to because of Corona. So I'm here and they have a bunch of fabric to sell. So they're having a good sale on it. You should check that out. The other one is Old Alley Quilt Shop that's in Sherburn, Minnesota. Is that what I decided MN was for? I think so. Minnesota. <laughs> the M states always confuse me. Um, so they actually have the eyeballs. So they have 20 and 30 millimeter eyeballs. So the ones that I had today, um, Rustic Horseshoe was nice enough to send. 
okay? These are big guys. These are the 30 millimeters, and I believe she has those on her website as well, um, but so does Old Alley Quilt Shop. She's got 20 mil millimeter and 30 millimeter, so um, various eyes. The, the, she got them, she said, for the um, ride on horse. So if you want to make the ride on horse, this is the size that you want for that, okay? So that's, that's sort of a specialty order. Um, so she has them. I know she has them. We talked about it. Use buttons on that one. I did. I used buttons on that one. Yeah. So let me talk about this one really quick and what I figured out with this. Um, there's a couple of things. So this guy's pretty cute. Um, I did his hair with, um, with the cuddle. Still shedding. Sorry. Um, I did the hair with the cuddle. We'll talk about how I did that. In the instructions, she shows you how to do it with yarn. So if you have access to yarn, you could totally do it that way. I don't have yarn. Um, so I did it with cuddle. I doubled up what I'm going to do today. So the hair that I'm going to do today will be half of this because I realize it's probably more than I need. So I'm going to do half of it and see how that works. All right. So it's always sort of an experiment with me when I'm making these things. Um, the other thing that I did, so I did buttons for the eyes. I didn't put on... Um, the eyelids, there are eyelids that we can do that go over this. Um, I didn't put those on and I didn't put the horn on, but because um, I really just wanted the cute little eyes to show. And these were just buttons that were from Doohickey Design. She does these little button packs that have a cute little head on them. Um, anyway, if you know Doohickey Design, she does this really cute little wooden doll stuff. And so that's where I got these. Um, the other thing that I was going to mention is that this guy... So there's a couple of things. If I sit him up, he tends to want to fall this way. And that's because he doesn't have anything in his booty to hold him down. So we'll talk about that tomorrow in putting the poly pellets. But this is a great place to use those. So that's these guys here. Okay. So poly pellets are just little plastic beads that weigh. And we've talked about that before when we did the elephant. Is that you can put the beads in their rump and it weighs it down. Okay. So this would be a great one because he's super cute when he's sitting on the ledge and his little legs hang down. Um, but then he likes to fall over too. So, um, and the other thing that I did that I noticed is that I don't, didn't want to stuff it super hard, so I didn't, but then that caused his neck to sort of fold a little bit. He looked real drowsy. And um, so I ended up sticking um, chenille stems. Doo, doo, doo. There they are, look at that. I just took three of them, I watered them up together, and then I just shoved them up inside after I did the stuffing, okay? So that creates this little stability in his neck, okay? So you can see his neck doesn't move. I'm gonna pull these out so you guys can see, okay? So then you can see how his neck kind of wants to fall down. So if you stuff it harder, it'll, it'll stay up. But for me, I found that if I put the chenille stems, I don't have to stuff as hard and his neck will stay upright, okay? So just a little thing that I found um, that works well, okay? Are the poly pellets safe for toddlers? They are, yeah, I mean, I, I think they are. What does it say? Perfect for use in bean bags. I feel like they have it. Weighted blankets. Use a loaner with polyfill. It doesn't give me like an age thing on there. Um, but what I do is I make a little like a muslin sack for it. With, so that's what I'll do with um, this one is I'll make a little piece that's about the size of the bum. And then I put all the poly pellets in there and then just tuck that into the bottom. Okay, and then they're actually safely enclosed in something. They're not going to come out through any seams, nothing like that. Okay, so I feel like they're very safe um, because I will encase them. I don't just put them in with the, with the stuffing. I know that you can, but I choose not to. Okay, all right. So this is a, <laughs> a sad looking little chenille stem, but this is a great trick for making things stay in a direction that you want to while still being pliable. So you can do that in legs and that sort of thing too. Um, so like if you do like giraffes or anything, the llama that we do for funky friends, you can put these in the legs as well and it'll make the legs stand up, okay? So that's a little insider tip on giving some stability to things. All right, so let's cut stuff out. So I've got the pony fabric here. I left one piece that I wanna cut out and that is the belly. And the reason I left that is um, because you have to cut it on the fold and I wanted to show you how I do that. Okay, so one thing you'll notice that my pattern is all shiny now and that's because the first thing I did is I printed it out 
well, actually, never mind. I got the package that has the, <laughs> the pattern in it. You'll print it out, and then what I did is I just put tape over it. So it's just regular, you know, paper, and then I put like packing tape over and overlap the tape, and then I cut out all of those pieces, okay? So that's what I did there. So what I wanna do is I want to make sure that my nap is going the right direction. So my nap is actually going this way. So this is my top to bottom. I'm gonna flip this over. And now what I can do is sort of choose a space in here that I want to use to um, have my belly. So this whole thing is gonna be on the front, whatever I do. So I'm gonna pick about here, okay. Is there any concern about the nap in this? Yeah, you wanna make sure that, uh, I made sure that the nap went down. In the pattern, she actually calls for you to do it the other direction. So lengthwise grain would be this way. The first time I did it, I did it that way. We'll see, I'm gonna do it the other direction with the nap going down this time and I'll tell you if it was any different. Um, I feel like she probably wrote the pattern that way because it's written for cotton. So cotton is a little bit different. We'll give it a shot. So I just wanna make sure that the nap is all going basically in the same direction. For me, it's gonna be top to bottom on this one um, and that it's not going opposite on the front and the back, for instance, okay? So I'm gonna take and I'm just gonna trace around this cause that's what I do. So I've got my little felt tip marker. And I'm gonna just trace around it, okay? So I wanna make sure that I transfer all of my markings, okay? She has on here, these went out in little triangles and I just don't do the triangles anymore. I just make marks in here, okay? So that's what I do is I cut those off and then I'm gonna mark those. And then right here, I wanna mark where my center is. It says to place on the fold, but I don't actually wanna put it on the fold because it's inaccurate when you're trying to cut with Lux Cuddle because the cuddle is so thick. So I just do one side and then I'm just gonna flip this guy over and I'm gonna put it back down so that those lines match up again, okay? Get those all in place. Okay, and then I'm just gonna trace around it. Okay, and after I do this a few times, this will look like my elephant pattern that had like all little black lines all over it from where I traced it and traced it and traced it. Okay, so then I'm gonna make sure my marks are over there. I'm gonna mark this one. Um, she has a couple of different ways that she shows you how to put the arm on. We're gonna just do it the way where we sandwich it in the seam, but um, she does show you how you can actually make a slit and insert it too, okay? All right, so now I've got my pattern. I folded it. So I can do two things with this. Well, I could do a few different, cut it a few different ways. So normally with Lux Cuddle, I wanna cut it with the blade. Okay, the Lux Cuddle, um, it makes less mess that way and all sorts of stuff. I can cut it with a rotary cutter and it's actually what I'm gonna do today. Um, and part of the reason I do that with stuffed animals sometimes is because it cuts off that edge and makes it easier to see the very edge of it. Um, that's what I'm gonna do today, okay? So that's what I did with all of these pieces. It really is just um, personal preference on what I wanna do. And this one, I wanna do it the quick and easy way. Okay. All right, we're just gonna cut that. If I'm not accurate, it's okay. It'll be all right. Okay, all right. So now I've got all of that. So I'm gonna take this, this is my extra. So when I did all the cutting before, and you can see all of this that's down here, this is the mess that normally gets avoided if I use the blade, okay? But I decided to use the, the rotary cutter. So you can see it's a lot of mess. So I'm just gonna vacuum that up really fast. Um, but what I did downstairs, when I did the other, is I cut out all of those pieces, I laid it out, and then I cleaned it up after I cut everything out, okay? So we're just gonna back in this way like that. All right, ta-da. <laughs> okay, so now I've got my belly taken care of, thank you. All right, so now I'm gonna put it to the side. Okay, so what I did with all of my pieces is that I put the patterns together and then I just uh, wonder clipped them so that they stayed together, okay? 
Um, so I've got all of my pieces cut there, and then I need to cut a couple of pieces for this color. All right, and I'm gonna do this the same way. So I'm gonna find my nap, it's running this direction. Okay, so I always wanna fold it this way so I can pet top to bottom, okay? If I do it this way, it's top to bottom, which you're gonna pet this way, so then it gets confusing. So always make sure that you're folding it over this way and doing that, okay? It's an easy way to confuse yourself and we don't wanna do that if we don't have to. All right. How's everybody doing? People leaving their city and state and all they, sorts of stuff? They are. Okay, good. Uh, you any questions? You, you mentioned um, that sometimes you do use a blade yep. to cut these out. And can you, uh, can for, for some folks who haven't seen that, could you do a little talk about that blade just so they know? Oh, the yeah, yeah. Point of reference? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the um, the little blade that I'm talking about is this guy. So it's the Olfa SAC-1 snap-off blade, yada, yada. It has a big, long name. Um, so this is my favorite thing for cutting Lux Cuddle, and I use it for all the blankets and for binding and all sorts of things. And basically what it does is it just cuts through the backing with this little blade. So normally I would use it, and I would just cut like this. Okay, and it'll just cut it like this. And that way it only cuts the backing really and leaves the front fuzz, which makes a lot less mess. Okay, so that's what I normally do. Um, for this one, I wanted to cut it so that those edges are nice and kind of hard, for lack of a better word. I want them really clear. Um, and I'm not gonna worry so much. I can bring up the fuzz that's there. The fuzz, you know, the fun, luxurious nap. Okay, so this is the muzzle piece that I'm doing and I am just tracing it out, okay? It tells you to do two fabric mirrored, which means you want one this way and one this way, okay? So I'm gonna come back over here, I'm gonna make sure that my notch is marked because I'm gonna actually use that. So one thing that you can do is sort of um, mark both sides of your, your pattern with your, with your notch stuff, okay? and then I can put my notch here. So now I've got those cut out, or traced out, and then I need to do the muzzle. And I'm gonna do that the same way, and this has got all of these little notches. So one of the things I know with this after making it is that this is actually, I need those notches, because um, that's where the little nostril is gonna fit in between those, okay? So one of the things that I, um, oops, I accidentally do a lot is that I forget to transfer these markings. So make sure that you do because it'll definitely, you'll be using them later. And if you don't do them and you have to bring your pattern out again, it's just a pain. Okay. So it's not the end of the world if you don't transfer them, but it's so much easier when you just do it from the very beginning. Okay, so now I've got my pattern pieces and now I'm just gonna trace, I'm gonna cut these out. So this one is an easy enough swoop that I can absolutely just cut it with my rotary. Okay, and usually with cuddle, this is sort of how I cut it, is that I'll cut um, long, long, and then the sides because what happens if I try to cut in a square because it's a knit, it'll shift on me and it gets harder. Okay, so flick that stuff off. With Cuddle 3, it's the easiest way to get it off is just to kind of flick it. Okay, top to bottom, put that together. Put that to the side, and now I've got these guys, okay? So I can cut this with my rotary, and I can even start around it. Okay, but it gets to be a pretty tight little curve. So I'm just gonna grab my scissors. Actually, I'm gonna grab the little ones because they're gonna be easier with this curve. So I'm just gonna take my scissors and these are the little Fomores. They're, they're comfort handle five inch razor edge or something. Um, I really should memorize all of these names or have them written on my hand before we start. <laughs> so I'll remember them. But these are great because they have these huge um, handles that your hands don't get so tired when you're using them and you have a lot of control and they're micro serrated so we've talked about that before about using micro serrated scissors with cuddle because it helps grab it 
Okay, but it lets me do this little corner right here really easily that I couldn't do with the rotary cutter. Okay, be much harder to do that and not accidentally snip off that end, which wouldn't be the end of the world, but the, pat the pattern is written that way for a reason. Okay, so cut along here. So the micro serrated just are really helpful for doing these. It grabs it so much better. We want to work our way around. Okay. So we'll get all of these cut out. So that's what I did yesterday is I cut out a bunch of this stuff so that we're ready to go. But I wanted to make sure that you knew how to cut it too. Okay. All right. So if you have a little bitty rotary cutter, the little like 24 millimeters, you could use that too to cut that. But I do find that I have better luck with scissors. Okay. We'll sweep later for vacuum. <laughs> Always. The floor was really clean when we started. Yeah, it always does this. I don't mind, because in the end, it's beautiful. Okay, so now I've got those pieces and I'm gonna put those together. So I always like to lay these together and then put my piece on there because then what happens is I can tell that I've got two that are mirrored because they're obviously mirrored right here. So I know that I did it right, okay? Um, if you're anything like me, you've tried this before and then accidentally cut out two going the same direction. Yeah, that's always a moment. All right, so I'm gonna follow along with the pattern so I can make sure that we do it in the order she wants me to, okay? So she gave us patterns for all of this. So when you, um, when you download it, you'll get all of this information and it tells you all the stuff that you're gonna need and then just a ton of lots of pictures in the instructions okay so i have to say like that was really um i was super happy with that because sometimes um patterns don't come with a lot of pictures most of the time and that's hard because then you're just trying to like hopefully you'll figure it out all right so we're going to start with the oh we did we're not doing the applique okay so we're going to sew the arms and the legs all right but she has lots of instructions you can see that they're written for cotton so you'll definitely need to sort of go back and forth with what I will show you and what she shows you, okay? Because I'm gonna do it so solely with the cuddle fabric, but the pattern is written for cotton, so you can absolutely do that, okay? So I'm gonna put that over here. So first we're gonna do the legs is what we're gonna do, and it has four legs, obviously. So it has front legs and back legs, and the front legs are a little bit smaller than the back legs. So if you remember when we did the elephant, I want you to do the big ones first, and then you can do the smaller ones, and that's a little bit easier because you practice on the bigger ones. Okay, so I've got for each leg, I'm gonna find them, I've got the pieces for the leg, I've got the circle, and I've got the hooves. All right, and then pull out the ones for the other as well. Okay, so I've got small and large, and we're gonna start with the large one. So I've got my, I've got two legs, all right. On here, you're gonna leave this open. So I've transferred those markings onto here. I also wrote on it back leg so I can remember. Um, one of the tricks that I use when this is a space that I need to not sew is I'll draw a line. So instead of just doing a notch and a notch, sometimes I'll do this line. Um, and it's really just a, a visual reminder to me. But like I know the first time that I sewed it, I sewed up both sides even though I'd left the notch lines and I was like, all right, I need to do that trick. So I just draw a line here and that's a easy way for me to remember like, oh, don't sew there, okay? So I'm gonna put these, oh, I'm not together yet. I'm gonna put these on first. So I'm gonna sew the hoof to the leg and the hoof to the leg, all right? So I'm gonna put these together. Now I'm gonna do the same thing that we always do when we're working with cuddle is we're gonna match up an end, we're gonna match up an end, and then we're gonna match in between, okay? So one of the things you're working with the Lux Cuddles is that the nap is really thick, obviously. Okay, it's a lot thicker than the C3 right here. So it wants to sort of push it away and you can see that, that this kind of gets pushed back. So I'm just gonna have to make sure that it stays together, okay? And that means I'm gonna move things a little bit and then I'm gonna pin it, okay? And on this same thing, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna pin from the other side Okay, because that helps keep it in check a little bit better than if you don't. So I'm gonna pin both of these and then sew both of them. Okay, so there's one. Yeah, the nap got weird down there. It can 
confused me. Okay. All right. So I'm going to pin here, pin at the other end, and then pin in between. Okay. And because the one is C3, which is like I like to call flat cuddle, um, and the other is a luxe cuddle. The luxe cuddle, when we're done, we're going to take that stiletto and fluff all of that up and it'll come over those edges. So if these seams aren't perfectly straight, you'll never notice it because the luxe is going to come right over the edge. All right. So we've got both of these pinned. So now I can go sew these together. Okay. So I'm going to sew these seams and then we'll sew the sides. All right. Are you ready to come around? I'm ready. All right. Let's do this. We're going to see if we can make this work this time, guys. Okay. We have a little bit less room to do our dance, but luckily we like each other, so it's still going to work. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to sew this. I've got the 9014 stretch needle. I'm using um, the Superior Threads polyester thread today, so it's called Sew Fine. Um, that's what I have here. I have a new spool somewhere that I'll have to find um, that I brought up because I'm probably going to run out at some point. Um, so that's what I'm using for here, 9014 Schmetz needle. And I'm on my Baby Lock Crescendo, we're going to use a, a 2.5 stitch length today. So a lot of times when we're sewing with Cuddle, we use a larger one, a 3 or a 3.5. With the stuffed animals, I like to keep it at a smaller one because it'll help when you're stuffing it to not actually pull those apart a little bit um, because we actually are putting stress on those seams, okay? Um, in the pattern, she suggests that you sew all your seams twice. And I'm going to suggest that you check your seam and sew it again if you have to. But if you use a polyester thread, it'll be nice and um, strong so your seams aren't going to pop. Okay. So whenever we're doing something that needs a lot of strength, so even if I were making this out of cotton, I would use a polyester thread to get that, um, those seams to be stronger. Okay. All right. So I'm going to use my foot to get my little stiletto here. And I'm going to put this underneath. We're sewing it at a quarter of an inch. Okay. Because it's a stuffed animal, we have that. Um, smaller stitch length or a smaller um, seam allowance. All right, Let's see if we can get this going. Okay, so I'm going to watch this seam allowance, make sure that it's feeding right along. But as long as I've pinned pretty accurately, we'll be all right. On these straight seams, it's a lot easier to get both sides caught, but we're going to check every time and make sure. Okay. You're using the, what you're using the digital dual feed still. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. So you would normally you would use a digital dual feed or a, um, oh I can't remember the name now for the FOF one. It, IDT IDT for FOFs or a walking foot if you have any other machine that doesn't have the the fancy little foot thing. Okay, so the walking foot is really important, um, and that's basically what this is. It just has a slightly different mechanism for how it works, um, but it's going to hold everything together as it works through the machine. And then make sure I pull those pins out before I hit them. Please do not sew over your pins, okay? And if I keep those pins in there, the fabric stays in check a little bit better. Okay, it stays where I want it. If it moves a little bit, we figure it out. It's all right, okay? All right, so now I've got both legs. Okay, so I've got both sides of the leg, and I'm just going to put these together. So I can see that this shifted over just a little bit. You can see it's off this edge just a little. It's going to be fine, okay? So it's a, like an eighth of an inch or a little bit less. It's fine. We're going to make it work. All right, so the important part here is that we're going to get these seams to match, okay? If they don't match perfectly on this, it's going to be okay because that Lux Cuddle is going to come right over the top, but it is going to be the first place that I pin because that's important because I want that. and then I'm going to make the ends match. Okay. All right. So I've got my, my seam is going to match here and now I'm going to make this end. <clears throat> Excuse me. I might have to grab my water. Okay. So I'm going to grab, put the end here and the end here and you can see this is super fluffy so really you just kind of have to to get it to match up as well as possible and then pin it okay real fluffy in there but that's the fun part okay because in the end it's going to be really yummy okay so i'm going to put a pin here where my notch is and then i'm going to come over here and put a pin where that notch is because that's the side i want to leave open Okay, so one of the things that's a little bit different about this pattern 
Then some of the others that we've done is that um, you're going to sew this together, sew it into the body and then stuff it, okay? And that helps to put it together because it's kind of small. Um, so it makes it a little bit easier for you than trying to stuff it and then turn it, okay? So we're actually gonna stuff it later from the side of that leg. All right, okay. So I'm gonna throw a couple of pins in here from the back to get that to lay nice and flat. Okay. All right, so I've got all those pins in there. I'll do a couple more in here. You'll notice that I'll always pin more when it's Lux Cuddle because the Lux Cuddle wants to move a lot more. I just really have to, to really control that one more than I do with the regular Cuddle. Oops. All right. So now I've got both sides pinned and I'm gonna sew down this side and then I'm gonna do this side, leave the gap and sew again, all right? Put another pin in here. All right, okay, so let's sew that. All right, so I'm gonna put this in. I'm gonna put it all the way underneath the foot. So. You can't, you can't really see it very well, but this where my fabric is, I'm not gonna start sewing and then let it come underneath. I'm gonna start it all the way underneath it and then start sewing, okay? Because Cuddle will like, like any other knit, it will like to suck down into the machine if you're not careful, okay? So I prefer to start, go back, and then I can go forward and I can make sure that it's moving. If I use the stiletto too, as I can sort of help it stay together and help it feed through. All right, we're gonna have a lot of thickness at a couple points here. Um, so if your machine has issues, you can always hand crank it. Um, there may be points that you have to hand sew because that happens. Okay. So I'm gonna work this through. I'm gonna try to get these to basically lay out flat. If they don't, it's okay. Okay, so one of the things that I do too when I'm working with this is I'll sort of give it a tug to make sure that it feeds in right. Okay, this one I'm gonna have to double check because my back side, that was where I um, was uneven. So I wanna make sure that that is actually um, even as I, or caught it all. Okay, all right. Okay, so I'm gonna check that. Yep, this got pulled over a little bit, but because it's cuddle, it doesn't matter. Okay, all right, that's the joy. Okay, so we're gonna come over here. Um, yeah, it's the joy of stuffed animals with cuddle and not with cotton. Oh my goodness. There we go. Okay, so if we use a cotton, we have to be more careful with our seams and make sure that they're actually nice and even. With cuddle, we can, we can fudge things a lot more, which is great. So we get over that. Okay. And I'm gonna come up here to where I left the notch for where I need to leave a little gap for stuffing. And I'm gonna back stitch just a little bit to give some strength. And then I'm gonna do that thing where I turn, okay? So if I turn off, I'm gonna sew right off the edge and back stitch just a little bit. And it'll give that, that corner right there a little extra strength because I'm gonna really be, um, you know, testing it pretty hard when I'm putting that stuffing in there. I don't want it to rip the stitches and I don't want it to pull apart. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing where I stitch from the quarter inch to the edge. And then I'm gonna pivot. And then I'm gonna stitch here. And I'm gonna back stitch just a little bit to give it some strength. Okay, just like on the other side. And then come on over here, back stitch, cut the thread. All right. All right, we're doing out, out there. We're doing okay out there. Okay, good. All right. Did everybody go buy their pattern already? <laughs> All right. So now what we're going to do is we need to put the foot on. Okay, so we've got a leg, and then we need to get the bottom of the foot on. Okay, the foot has, <clears throat> excuse me, the foot has um, markings on it for where the seams go. But what I found I want to do is I actually want to mark all of them. Okay, so I did this with the fabric, but I'm going to show you how to do it with this okay is that I want to mark so what I would suggest that you do is that you mark the pattern first so I'm going to mark it in the halves okay so here and here so those are the 
those and then these will get folded this direction. Okay, and you can see it lands up perfectly where those arrows were because those were the, the notches for the seams. Okay, so we're still gonna do that on the seam. Okay, but now it's gonna be easier because I can divide this into quarters and um, get it to fit into the hooves. So the same thing I'm gonna do here. So I've got my seams, obviously. I'm gonna match those up. Then I'm gonna come over here. I need to grab the silver one. Okay, I'm gonna mark my half here. Silver Sharpie. Silver Sharpie. Works really well for dark fabrics. Okay, so now I've got mine all marked here. So I've got one, two, three, four marks here. And I'm gonna do the same thing on here. So the only thing I wanna make sure is that I'm looking to see, so my nap runs this way. If I look at the back here, I'm not sure how much you guys can see it because it's a dark fabric, but I can see the lines of the knit run this way. So I wanna make sure that when I am aligning this, that I'm aligning it kind of, um, parallel to those lines. So I don't want to be too far off. Okay, and then I'm just going to go around and mark all of these guys. So I just move one up, move it over, put it back, move it over enough I can mark the other one. Okay, so when I did it before, and you can do it either way, is that I would fold it the same way here. So I would fold it, fold it in half, mark, mark, Okay, so either way that you wanna do it, now I have all four marks here, okay? So the biggest thing that you need to remember is that when this leg is going in, it's actually gonna go into the bottom of the horse in this direction, okay? So I want my nap to run this way because this is gonna be the top of its leg, okay? So I'm gonna turn this out for you guys so you can see, okay? So this, will be the inside of its leg. Okay, so I want a top to be here. If it were on the other side, the top is gonna to be here. So I'll do one one way and one the other, all right? You can think about it. If it doesn't compute in your head, it's okay. Um, but I'm gonna get the nap to run top to bottom here. With this stuffed animal, you're not using any stabilizer on any no. of this fabric this time? No. No, I only use the stabilizer when I'm sewing quilt stuff. Okay? This, I really want it to have its flexibility. Because it's a knit fabric, I want it to be able to move, and it will be able to stuff and then be really soft and yummy. So I'm using the, the knit to my, my benefit with this one. Okay? So I'm going to do the same thing, and I'm going to pin all the way around this. So I've got my these two pinned and then these two match up with my seam okay so I'll do that and then I'm going to pin in between so for me if I do it in quarters it's a little bit easier than just in halves and trying to get them to even evenly match all the way um, so if I do it in quarters it's a little bit easier okay so now I've got those so now I just have to match these and if you see if I sort of just manipulate it a little bit, they'll totally match. Okay, so then I'm just gonna pin it. I'm gonna do that every other pin, where one goes one way, one goes the other, to keep it nice and flat as we work around here. This is why I want you to do the big foot first, is because this sewing in a circle definitely takes some practice, okay? Don't be afraid to do a ton of pins, and you can definitely, um, you can pin more, but don't pin too far deep into it. So that's, that's one of the keys with pinning these is just to make sure that your pins are not too far past where you're gonna be sewing. The smaller it is, the more it needs to be just at the edge. Oops. Okay, so you can see I'm pinning every other. So from this side to this side to this side to this side, okay? So this one's I pinned from the back. So this side I'm gonna pin from the front. And then I'm gonna pull this, make sure that edge matches, pin from the other side, okay? That helps keep this a little bit flatter as it comes around in a circle. And then I can sew this a little bit easier. If I pin it all one direction, it really wants to curl, okay? So now I'm gonna take this over to the machine and I'm gonna sew in a circle. So the key here is to get your foot 
to sit down, okay? So it's sitting down in the machine how I want it to sew, all right? I'm gonna make sure that it's nice and flat in there and get it underneath the foot, okay? And start sewing somewhere I can see that it's real flat. So one of the things that I do as I'm working around this is I keep this nice and flat, but I also keep a little bit of tension as it's coming through to keep things where I want them to be, okay? And to sew nice and flat. If you practice this a little bit, you'll be surprised at how much easier it gets. It's definitely a little bit harder the first time, so be patient with yourself as you, as you learn to sew in a circle, okay? The key is really just pinning, oops, taking the pins out at the very last second, basically. So we don't wanna take the pins out too early because it really needs to hold things in place, okay? And then I'm sort of going to move this guy. So this guy can become really obnoxious. So I'm just going to keep moving it as I go. And like here, I can see that this wants to get caught up here. So I'm just going to lift my foot, shift things around, put the foot back down. It will be much easier to see where I'm sewing. Okay, so don't be afraid to stop, move things, um, and make it a little bit easier for you. Okay. I feel like that got folded up right there. We're gonna see when I turn it over. Maybe we'll have to do a little lesson in taking things out again today. <laughs> okay, make sure these are lined up. I can see the bottom and the top. Okay, we wanna make sure that they're as lined up as possible. And I'm just gonna keep shifting things around. The stiletto really helps me. This is the one that we have talked about lots before. It's by Annie Stiletto. If you haven't gotten one yet, you're gonna want it. It's really, it's like my favorite tool. It just helps so much when I'm sewing with this. Okay. Make sure that gets fed in. Okay, and if this gets a little bit wonky over here, I'm not really gonna care, because it's gonna be okay. All right, I'm gonna stretch it as much as I can, get it to feed in there. Okay, it's gonna come around here. We're gonna meet up and then we're gonna check it, all right? I, I would say probably a third of the time I have to re-sew and I'm okay with that, okay? All right, so yep, see, I told you, it folded over. I was like, I think I feel it folded over, okay? So you'll get these little chunks in here. So you can see here where it's sort of like ka-chunked. This is where I like lifted the foot or something and it'll do that. It'll be, it'll be a little bit weird. It usually doesn't show at all unless it's too big of a chunk. Okay, so this looks all right. I'm gonna um, test this right here. So this is where it got folded over. I wanna make sure that it'll, it'll be okay. I can pull it, I don't see a hole there. Okay, we are okay. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this inside out through the little gap that I left, okay? This is the hole at the top and it's too small to work that through. So we're gonna pull it through the side. Okay, at this point I can stick my finger in here and I can sort of push out those seams. When I'm stuffing it, I'll be able to do that a little bit better um, with the stuffing, but for now I just wanna do it with my finger and hold it in place. Okay, all right. So now we're gonna come over here and I'm gonna sew this, just the top of it, and I'm gonna sew this shut, okay? So I'm just gonna do that with a quick little zigzag. And then what happens is that's gonna hold that down so that when I sew it, it's already got like, um, I don't know, a closure at the end, it's easy. And uh, I just do this with the big zigzag. So the same zigzag that we normally do, the five and five, I've got it saved in my machine. Um, of anything, it's a great way of using, if you have the um, memory in your machine, save it for those stitches that you tend to use a lot. For me, it's that zigzag. Okay. All right, so there we go. So now we got the leg. All right, so now I've got, I have the two legs because I did the other one before. So I've got my two legs done and then I'm gonna do my other back one. Okay, and we're gonna do the same thing one more time, but it's a smaller one. So I want you to see that too and how that works. Okay, so same process. The right sides together. Matching up our ends. Who makes these clover? Um, who makes these flower head pins? <laughs> yeah, the clover does. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, clover. Uh -huh. They're my favorite. Um, if you guys, so I don't know how many of you are on our I Love Cuddle group, but if you are not, it's a great place to be. We just get to share our different projects. Somebody posted today about their um, their jelly bean pillow that they made from 
the Sew Together Tuesday we did, oh, a month ago or something, um, and she did her her little jelly bean pillows and posted them there. But I posted the other day a video from Clover about all of their pins, the different styles that they have and what they're good for, which I thought was good information. So sometimes we don't, um, yeah, sometimes we don't know what we don't know. And I feel like the Clover people do a pretty good job of sharing why their, why their stuff is, is quality. So I had posted that so that you guys could see it. So yeah, if you haven't joined us over there on I Love Cuddle, you should definitely do that. Um, you can also join us on Instagram and Pinterest. And then we post all of these on YouTube as well. So if you ever want to see what we did and you weren't able to be there, um, and watch it live, you can always join us on Facebook. All right, so I'm gonna sew both of these guys together. I'm gonna grab some of my pins too, because I got a lot. All right, so I'll put this one over, oops, over here. All right. Just the one zigzag. Okay. I'm gonna stick this underneath there. I'm gonna get it all the way underneath the foot. I'm gonna switch it back to a straight stitch. I'm going to take that pin out, go forward just a few stitches, then we go back a few stitches, and then I keep going forward. Okay. All right. Okay, so you'll see I pin, it's probably about every inch or less. Um, so it seems like a lot of pinning, but it really does make a huge difference. So if you've tried to work with Cuddle before and you've been frustrated with it or any minky, um, yeah, the pinning makes a huge, huge difference. Okay. And like I said, we use the clover ones. The clover pins are my favorite because they are nice and strong and very sharp. Um, and the heads don't fall off. So I've had very good luck with these. So I really, I like them a lot. Pretty much every project you use um, just uh, this neutral gray thread. Right. Yep, it's just a medium gray. So you can see this really well. It's sort of why I use it is so you guys can see this really easily. But also if I look over here, you can't, you can't see that thread at all. Okay. And this is what I was talking about. You'll be able to come back over here later and fluff that all up. Pull that. You see that gets stuck down in the seam. And I'm just going to pull that, fluff it up, and it pulls it on out. Okay. Then it comes right over. Looks beautiful. All right. Okay. So yeah, I just use medium gray. I really like Mettler threads too, and we use both of them. So um, I just sort of go back and forth with them, which one, whichever one I is in my machine at the time. So this is the difference. This is when it's still all stuck down in because I haven't pulled up any of those those um, fabric bits. Okay, the nap is still stuck down in there. This is afterward, and it comes down over the hoof, which makes it really cute. So definitely, um, it's something that you want to do. Make sure that you always do that as you fluff your seams, especially with the stuffed animals. I do it with everything at the blankets and everything, but with the stuffed animals, it makes all the difference. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing here. Pin these together. Okay. Make sure my seams match. Okay, and if they don't match perfectly, if it ends up getting a little bit off, you're okay. If it's like a quarter of an inch off, you'll wanna fix it because it's not a long enough seam and it will be enough that you can, you can see it. If it's, you know, an eighth of an inch, you're fine. I feel like half the battle is knowing when I have to take it out. And if you've watched me for very long, you know I don't really like taking stuff out. I avoid it. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to repin that slightly because I got it. I want that brown to match up just a little bit better on this side. All right. You doing okay? Yep. Have any questions? Everybody just, you know, watching, enjoying there it. There was the, the one little back and forth between the straight stitch and then um, the, the used, quick, you briefly used the zigzag just to close the end of the mm -hmm. leg and then we went back to the straight stitch. Yep, exactly, yep. exactly. So one of the things that I get asked a lot when working with this is, um, do you have to use a stretch stitch because it's a knit fabric? And I do not, I use just a regular old straight stitch. I have not had any problems with that popping or not wanting to stretch at all. Um, the polyester makes all the difference in that because it's a polyester thread and polyester thread has a little stretch to it anyway. Um, so you'll be okay. Uh, if you do the stretch stitch, it just takes you forever and it's not necessary. So I just don't do it. Yeah. We haven't run into any curves on this yet that need to be clipped. 
not yet. And I rarely clip my curves anyway. So you see, well, actually we did do that. Uh, we did do the bottom. That's true. The circle at the bottom, I didn't clip any of those. If I were doing that out of cotton, I absolutely would have. But um, this guy here. So when we turn this, this all comes and just sits in there really nice. If I were doing this with cotton, I would have clipped all of those curves so that it laid in. Yeah, but with the, the cuddle. And even though it wasn't a perfect circle that I sewed, it looks pretty darn good. It looks pretty, pretty perfect, which I like. I like, you know, fake it, pretend. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna do the same thing on this leg and I'm gonna make sure that I do my notches. So you can see here's my little line that I drew to make sure that I don't sew that. If I do sew it, which happened uh, when I did the other one, is you're just gonna go and take that out. So I end up going back, I add a little bit of strength to where I should have stopped my seam. So I'll go back and put some stitches in there. And um, it wants to stick, hold on. Tried to suck it in, okay. So I'm just gonna let that restart because I could feel it wasn't, wasn't wanting to move. So I'm actually, if I can get those threads to come back, I'm just gonna put it in a little bit further. Try again. There we go. Okay. Um, so I just strengthen where I was going to turn it before and then I take those stitches out in the middle. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm to my notch. So now I'm gonna back stitch a couple of stitches, go forward a couple pivot, sew off the edge, okay? So this little trick gives, just gives you more strength at those, at those openings, all right? This is great, we did it with, uh, we do it with the scarf, we did it with the stuffed animals, we do it with all sorts of things. Um, yeah, it just works really well to give it a little bit of strength right there. Okay, so I'm gonna move that just slightly because I wanna see where my line is. Okay, I'm gonna take that out. I'll put my needle down. Okay, so now I'm gonna sew off the edge and then back. And the pivot. Do the same thing, just a couple little stitches, couple stitches, and then off the end. Okay. And clip my thread. All right, oops, and then we need to do the other side. So now I've got that space open. I'm gonna come back in and put this here, and then I'm gonna stitch down this whole side. Okay, and you can see that sometimes, like if you show over here, you see how this line gets a little bit wobbly, like it's not perfectly straight, and that happens because of the knit fabric. So on one side, it'll look perfectly fine, and on the other side, it sort of goes around the knit things. Like, it doesn't pat, poke through it. So you remember, so that was one thing we talked about was, like, the stretch needle is what you want to use, and that's what happens is it goes around those stitches, for lack of a better word, in the fabric, the way that the fabric is made. It goes around each one of those little threads, and, um, and it won't pop your pop your, the fabric and we'll make little holes in it. Just goes around it instead. It's super weird, but totally true. And I've noticed that this will happen more when I'm sewing down the edge that where the, this is the, the lengthwise grain. I notice that it'll do it more here. If I put it in the light, you can see it pretty darn well. You see those little kagonk kunks? That's what that is. Okay, so that's perfectly fine. Don't worry about that when that happens. It happens a lot when I'm sewing down a side that's not quite down the length of it, but just off a little because it's going around those bits of the fabric, okay? That's what your uh, stretch needle will do for you, all right? So now I've got this, where's my circle? Okay, so I'm going to mark my halves here, with my little silver Sharpie, okay? Now I can sort of feel where these are, and that's how I'm kind of matching that. So I can see it and I can feel it too. So now I've got my quarters matched on that. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this. Okay, and I'm gonna look and see where the, the line is in the fabric. So this is my top to bottom here. Okay, so I'm gonna fold this in half this direction. And you could use pins here too. You could stick pins in. Um, I like to do the marks 
because it won't come out. I can't knock the pins and knock it out, and then I have to measure it again. So I just do the Sharpie. And then I sort of just look on either side, make sure that it's basically matching. Okay, if it's not perfect, it's gonna be fine because you'll be able to, to wiggle it into place. But we try to be, try to be accurate. Okay, all right. Okay, so now I can take these. I'll find my, the direction that my nap is going. Okay, so this is top to bottom. This is side to side. Okay, this is bottom to top. So I can always tell top and bottom because the, the one is so much different than the other. Okay, so side to side, they really don't change too much, but top to bottom drastically. Okay, so I'm gonna put that on a side. And then I'm going to do those four pins again, and then pin in between. Okay, so this one goes in a seam allowance. I'm going to come back over here. And we're just going to pin all of these. So this smaller one will definitely get a little bit more um, intense for you. Okay, so take your time with this. Um, it's not as small as some of the other things, like the elephant. So if you did the elephant, you'll be like, oh, this is easy. This is a big circle. If you haven't done circles before, just take your time. Okay, definitely it's a, it's a learning process for sure. Okay, but you can see I just work at it a little bit at a time, line it up, pin it, work on the next spot. I'm not going to be able to line up that whole thing at a time. Like, yeah. Even the quarter circle, I can't line up the whole thing at a time. All right, but if you notice, I'll kind of flip it this way, and that helps to bring it so that um, this, this bottom one spreads and this one can catch it all. Okay. Get it lined up. And I just try not to move it too terribly much. Okay, this one I feel like it needs to move just slightly. That pin has something on it. Like I used it when I was glue basting or something. Or I used it to open up the glue. Sometimes that happens. Stick it in there. Yeah, then it gets all yucky. Okay, not with the 505 spray, just so you know with the glue basting. Okay, so now I've got my circle all pinned on there. We're gonna sew this again. You can see it's a pretty small little circle. What is it? Two and a half inches or so across. Okay, so we're just gonna take our time, sew that all on there. Let me get some of my pins again. Okay, we're gonna stick this under, make sure it's nice and flat, okay? And then the leg is hanging off to the side. I'm gonna do the same thing and just work around Make sure that it's pulling straight, get that leg out of the way, all that good stuff. And you'll notice I don't backstitch when I start this, I just overlap it and I come back over and I try to overlap it a quarter of an inch or so. And that's what I do to sort of lock that seam in place. Okay, so now I'm gonna, I'm gonna move this, and lift things up, okay? Get that leg pulled toward the back and feed it around. Okay, for me, half the battle really is that, that leg being there because it's just bulky and it's keeping it toward the back will help a lot. Okay. Stab that. It's the nice thing about this stiletto is that I can kind of stab through the fabric and stab both layers. It doesn't just sort of pinch it onto it. It actually does go through both layers. Okay, and move this again. Okay, then I can take that out and give it a little pull as it's kind of coming through here. Make sure that it's nice and even. Okay, so here we go again, just lifting it, moving it. And especially as we come to those seams, it's really bulky. So making sure that that's as flat as possible is important. Okay, so I'm gonna get over that seam and then I'm gonna do the same thing, lift this, move that. Okay, and then just keep going. 
Okay, so as I come around here, this is what I do, is I just come and I sew right over that spot, and then I just keep sewing for a little bit, and then I take it out. And that always seems to work. I haven't had any issues with that one, okay? All right, so make sure I caught my bottom all basically. It's mostly a circle, okay? So I'm gonna do the same thing and pop it out here. If I could get it to turn, come on, little guy. There we go. Okay. So we'll get that to come out. Do, do, do. All right. So I'm gonna stick this in here because I can use this little end and push that out. And that's just the end of my stiletto. Okay, push that seam out. Now I've got all four legs. All right. Okay, so now I've got the legs. Let's see what she wants us to do next. Legs, legs, muzzle. Okay, so we're gonna do the muzzle and then we're gonna come back tomorrow. All right. Do, do, do. Okay, so here's my muzzle. And, hold on. Oh no, where's my little piece? Okay, here it is. All right, so this is the nostril. So this is a good little technique to, um, to show you guys. So basically the way that this works is you're going to take your fabric, take a big hunk of fabric, and you're gonna trace this. So when you get the pattern, it shows the cut line and then the sew, or the sew line and then the cut line. What you want to do though, is you want to just cut out to the sew line, trace around it, and then we're gonna sew on this, and then we're gonna cut it out. Because this is such a tiny piece, trying to stick this through the machine, if I cut this out with a quarter inch seam allowance right now, tried to keep it even and sewed it, it would be terrible, okay? Not any fun at all. So what I did is I cut this, I just folded this over, it's going this direction, so my nap is down on both. So I folded it widthwise, is that what that, I think that's what that's called? Okay, and then I'm gonna pin it on either side here. Okay, and I'm gonna sew just that big arch. Okay, so I'm gonna sew right along here. If I have this whole big piece of fabric, this is easy to, to manipulate. This little tiny thing, too hard, don't do it. Okay, so let's go sew this, and then we'll cut it out. Okay, so it's a little bit backwards, but this works for a lot of things that are sort of fidgety. Um, the eyelids work the same way in this. Okay, the one thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we backstitch here because we're gonna turn it inside out. Okay, so I'm gonna start, I'm gonna backstitch, and then I'm gonna take this and bring it all the way around, following that little line and just sewing on that. Okay. Okay, and I'm just gonna keep picking up my foot because this is a tight little corner and the more I try to pull this and get it to go, the more it's not gonna work because it's a knit, okay? Um, I can see that line okay. If you're having a hard time with yours to see it, you can move it to an open toe foot and you'd be able to see it better, okay? So I've got knit sewn all along that line. So this was the sew line in the pattern, okay? So now I've gotten that sewn. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut it out, okay? So actually I'm gonna chop this bottom part off because that's easy enough to do with the rotary. Okay, so now I've cut along there. So then I'm just gonna cut here. Let's see if I can. And I wanna cut this really nice and close so it's gonna be probably about an eighth of an inch or a little less. Okay, all the way around here. All right, so now I've got a nostril, but how does this work it to be a nostril? It's so weird, right? That's what I thought the first time I made it too. Okay, <laughs> so then what we're doing is we're turning it inside out, and then it turns here, and then it becomes a little nostril. So at this point, I'm going to pin that, and I'm gonna try to get that even on that edge. Okay, and pin that. All right, so let's show them on this guy what that is. So what this little thing becomes is this little piece here, okay? So 
um, there's a little bit of a struggle because it's such a tiny piece it gets really thick here so one of the things that you could consider if you were doing this and you were really struggling with the thickness is that you could use the inside piece do one piece cuddle and one piece cotton so if you did the inside piece cotton you would really never notice that very much and it would make it thinner okay so that's one thing that I did consider doing um, because it is really thick right there um, it's a lot of it's a lot of bulk in a little bitty piece okay so I've got one nostril and two nostrils okay so and I'm gonna pin these together this is also someplace that if you were struggling with this you could um, do some hand stitching to sort of base that together. I tried to baste it together like with the zigzag like we did with the legs um, across here and it was it's just too small I couldn't get it to, to do it right and that was you know frustrating for me. Okay so now I've got my muzzle piece and you remember I told you about the nostril notches that we put the little lines on either side okay that's where those little nostrils line up. So the way that this works is it's going to come this direction this is the top so we want to make sure that the nostrils go forward okay so this little curve or the little opening is here the fold is up here so that when this comes it looks like that okay so I'm gonna put that here and I'm gonna keep that pin on there and I'm just gonna match it up between those notches all right And I'm gonna pin it twice because it's nice and bulky. And as soon as I hit it with the machine, it's gonna to wanna to move. And I don't want that to happen. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing over here. The fold, whoops, the fold goes up. Raw edges go together, and it's gonna go right between those little notches, those markings for me. Okay. All right. All right, so now I'm going to take this over to the machine and we're just going to zigzag those down um, just right along there to hold that in place. All right, that'll make it easier to sew the next part. Okay, and so the, the zigzagging actually has like dual function and that it holds it in place, but it also sort of flattens that seam. Okay. So you saw I waited till the very last second. I'm really sewing nice and slow because I want to catch that and I don't want to take the pins out until I have to. So you can see that sort of smashes that down a little bit better than this is right here, okay? So that's sort of the dual function is it's gonna hold it in place but also smash that, okay? So let's try it over here. Okay, and I'm gonna come right off the edge and I'm gonna help it feed through. Oh, did I just lose my thread? I did. I don't know. Okay, here comes the fun part, guys. Oh, I did it. Remember that one time I struggled like 18 times? Okay, maybe not that many times, but it felt like it. it felt like there were a million people watching and that it took me like 20 times to get through. Okay. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this pin out because I'm right there. Let's see if I can get it to move a little. You just hand cranked that couple of stitches. I did. You? Yeah, I yeah. just hand cranked it because I just I want to be really careful and I just want it to get it. Okay, so now it's smashed that flat and held it in place. All right, so it doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be on there. All right, so now I've got this, and then here are my the side pieces for the muzzle. All right, so this is the top. This is the bottom. This is my center notch, which is the same as here, okay? So these notches need to match. Here was the top, comes around, here's the center, here's the bottom, okay? So I'm just gonna pick that up and make those notches match, okay? So this is a funky piece because you can see we're sewing a mostly straight piece to a really curved piece, but we're gonna do the same thing that we always do. And then we're gonna come over here and we're gonna pin that. Okay, and then I'm gonna pin in between. So I'm gonna pin further apart first and then I'll come in between there because I just wanna make sure that it's gonna fit in there and what I need to do to make it work. 
Come on. Okay, so you're gonna have to you're gonna have to fidget with it, and that's totally what I have to do. Is I just have to keep sort of manipulating things. All right. And this curve is gonna be slightly bigger than the flat because that's the way curves work in. Okay, so right here you can see that this wants to sort of bulk right here. Okay, this side is a little bit bigger. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pin from this side and it will help feed that down. Okay, sort of takes out that bulk. I'm gonna add another pin in here. So this is gonna have just a ton of pins around this because I want it to be nice and flat. All right, I'm gonna come over here. Okay. All right, so everybody leave their city, state. Tell me about your favorite place. Oops, I need to come pin this one. Okay, when I get this muzzle done, we have a little something special if you wanna hang out. Um, we talked a few weeks ago about a quilt that Hawk and I had done God, what was it, two years ago now? Two years. Um, two years ago now, and it hangs downstairs in the living room. We talked about it because it has cuddle on the back. We wanted to show it to you guys and then, um, yeah, talk a little bit about it and uh, what you can do and kind of the art that we make. So hang on for that if you want to, and, uh, yeah, I'll be excited to show you guys. All right, so I've got this all the way pinned. You can see there's a bunch of pins in here, okay, and you can see that I leave most of the pin out. That's sort of how I work. All right, so now we're gonna sew this. So for me, the easiest way to sew this is from this side because I can see where all of this is gonna be. I want this to make sure it doesn't actually get puckers in it. So it's the same way as sewing that circle on the hoof, okay, is that the, this big stuff we want on the top. Okay, so I'm gonna put it in the same way and we're gonna sew this one and then we'll do the other side of it. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna come under here Make sure that that's nice and flat. Okay. Oops, I need to get that. Okay, and I'm gonna back stitch a little, and I'm gonna go forward and make sure that that keeps moving. Okay, and I'm just gonna work my way around here. Okay, so you can see I'm just gonna go nice and slow and use this stiletto to sort of help me guide it through. All right, this is another area that you're definitely gonna wanna check and make sure that you have caught all of the seams, the edges, everything like that when you're done because it is um, just a little bit funkier, okay? okay? And when we come over to this part that has the nostril, I wanna make sure that I have all of the zigzag covered, right? So that that will hide inside the seam allowance. If this is really too thick for your machine, because um, some machines will balk at this, is that um, one, change your presser foot pressure, try that first, um, but don't be afraid to hand crank. You saw me do it when I did that, okay? It's just a little bit easier and it's, um, let me just shove that a little, burn, come on. <laughs> it's like stuck in there now that I'm like, yeah, sometimes it won't wanna do it. There we go, okay. Mine, it was just stuck because it's so thick. And so I had to give it a little tug from the back. You couldn't really see that very well, but. Okay. We wanna secure all of these um, starts and stops too. You'll notice when I do the quilts, I don't do that. Um, when I do this, I do because those are all gonna get tugged at some point. Okay, so I checked all of this. I make sure that that's been caught there. If I come around this side, I just want to do the same thing and make sure that all of those edges got caught. Okay? And it did. All right. So that's how one side's going to be. ta -da. Okay? So now we're going to do the other side. So I'm going to do the same thing. And getting the edges to match. Okay? And getting that center notch. And then the other end and then pinning in between. Okay, so all of the um, all of the stuffed animals we sort of work with are all this sort of way. Um, if you look at the Rustic Horseshoe, their website, she's got a bunch of different patterns. If you're on the I Love Cuddle Fabric, or yeah, I Love Cuddle Fabric group, then you will um, 
see one of our brand ambassadors, Jackie, she posted today, she did a, um, a koala, which was really awesome. And she did it out of faux fur, which um, I have to give her major kudos for that one because faux fur is uh, something to be tackled. Oh, was it a sloth? sloth? Okay, she did the koala too. You're right, it was a sloth today that she posted though. Yeah, and that's all made out of the faux fur. Yeah, and it was, it was impressive, right? <laughs> it was. Yeah, it, it, it lands very, very squarely. Yeah. As a sloth. Yeah, it's very authentic. <laughs> yeah, it was really, it was really good. Um, but yeah, faux fur is definitely um, a little more uh, difficult to sew with than Lux Cuddle. Well, it's one of the things that I like about Lux Cuddle is because it kind of has the, the look of a faux fur without being as difficult to sew. Okay, but you can use all sorts of fabric. So cotton, faux furs, cuddle, you know, all sorts of stuff. All right. I'm just gonna keep coming around. And if I have to manipulate and take pins out and repin, it's totally fine. Um, it's sort of what happens. I try to like go along the way, make sure that I can get it to match up, and then I pin it here. And then I'll just keep doing that same same thing of making sure that it matches. Oops. And then if I have to fix it, I can. Okay, all right. So there we got the other crazy one. So now we have to deal with this thing being over here. And that's what we're gonna wanna make sure we do is keep that over to the side as we're sewing. So let's go do that. I'm gonna take, of course, my million pins. Okay and my little stiletto. And we're gonna get back in here. And uh, stick it underneath. So you can use this stiletto really for your benefit in getting, being able to manipulate the fabric even while it's underneath the, the machine. Okay. So I'm gonna back stitch and then work my way around. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing when I come around to this nostril, make sure I've hidden my zigzag inside there, make sure that I catch it all. Okay, get my pins out of the way. Definitely don't want to run over those. Okay, got that to work, yay! All right, then we're just going to come around the curve. You'll notice I kind of like pull it a little bit and that's just to get it to sort of stretch into place and to fit a little bit better. Um, and that seems to work, but it definitely, um, that's just from practice. Okay. okay, so I'm gonna, you can see that this is starting to fold right here. It's, it's getting too much and I'm gonna end up putting a pleat in there that I don't want to, but all I have to do is move this out of the way, okay? And then it's going to be able to see, lay down perfectly fine. So it might seem like it was off and then it actually wasn't. Okay. All right. So now we'll check that one. See if that one worked too. Okay. We'll go all the way around. Looks like it caught all of it. That's the important part. Okay. So look, <laughs> all of a sudden it looks like it's something. How cute is that? Okay, that's gonna be its little muzzle. So one of the things that I really like about this pattern that I'll tell you that's different from other patterns that I have worked with is that she does this little thing where she led like this checkpoint. This is how your legs should look at this point. Okay, so like it shows me exactly what I'm going for. So like the little muzzle, it shows you down here each of the little steps. Okay, and that it should look basically like this. All right, and for me that's really helpful because sometimes, especially when we're sewing things that are um, different from what we've sewn before, we don't really know what is it exactly supposed to look like at this point. So when I have a picture that that's what it's supposed to look like, I know like, okay, that's what it is. So right now I've got the, um, what time is it? Okay, so we've got the, um, the muzzle done, we've got the legs, I've got both legs done, and then tomorrow we're gonna come back, we're gonna do the ear, and then we'll put the face, we can put it all together, right? Yes, okay, and I'll show you how we do the, um, 
how we do the main, and I'll show you how I do that. Um, I'm gonna go over that pretty quickly and then I'll probably write a separate blog post about it because there's a lot more to it. Um, but like I said, you can also use yarn for that. So, um, so that's where we're gonna stop for now, okay? Tomorrow we'll come back, we'll make a face and a head and hair and all sorts of fun stuff. Um, so make sure that you're following us, that you are on our I Love Cuddle group, that you follow us on Instagram, all of that good stuff, okay? All right, so now. Winner. Oh, winner! Thank you. Do I have a winner? Let me see. Oh, we don't have a winner yet. Ellen's gonna choose one. I didn't warn her. She didn't know we were wrapping up yet. We were still gonna do a little walk. Okay, right? we are. Okay, oh, there she is. Okay, thanks, Ellen. <laughs> <laughs> Ellen's so good. Um, so our winner is uh, Debbie Parks from Ella J. I think is how you might, might pronounce that. Uh, Georgia. Okay, so Debbie Parks, you are the winner. So you will win a kit just like this with the eyes and the, all the fabric and the pattern and the bag of stuffing for it. So you can make your own little nutty nag. I'm super excited about that. So that'll be fun to see those come together. So are we ready now? Yeah, I think we're ready now. So, okay. you know, like sometimes after you've watched a good movie and there's the credits and then there's like that little sneaky thing at the end where you get to learn something new. <laughs> All right, we're going we're we're to do it. We're going to walk through the house and we're going to learn some stuff. Okay. Do you want me to carry the camera? Um, no, we're, uh, I'm just going to say hi. Okay. And, and then I'm going to let you talk. I'm still going to run the camera for okay. now. Okay. 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 Totally cool. All right. So we're going to head downstairs. So <laughs> welcome to our house. Okay. <laughs> All right, so if you don't if you don't want to come along for the quilt ride, you don't have to. I won't be offended, but we wanted to show you a little bit more about sort of what we do so you can kind of get to know us, but also see how you can use cuddle with a cotton fabric too. Um, all right, so welcome to our loft. Um, so this is Hawk's studio, so I have my studio and Hawk has an art studio because he's a painter. That's my um, painting studio right across the way here on the mezzanine. And then if you look out over the rest of the house and then, um, yeah. No, we'll go we down. Might, we might pop back up here because I've got some uh, some uh, work. Uh, I've got some parts of the way we did the Ascension quilt laid out up here. Oh, we'll okay, see. okay, all right. So down here, we've got more art. We've got a kitchen. So this is. Let me see if I can turn turn this light off so it doesn't grab it. There we go. So we have a lamp in front of it. So sorry that that's there. Um, I might need you to pop up on the bench so you can get a close up. So basically what this is, is a quilt that Hawk and I did two years ago. Um, <laughs> so you can see the entire thing. It's called the Ascension Quilt. Um, we were able to uh, show this in a couple of different places. The place where we live, we have a art show twice a year. So we've shown it for that and um, I've been able to show it at the quilt show with Ricky Timms and Alex Anderson. Um, so this is a quilt that we did based on a mural that Hawk had made. And um, he had painted it in his bedroom when we had first started dating. And I was like, it'd be really neat to collaborate on something. And so we collaborated on this. And uh, the, basically the idea was his, and then I took my quilting skills and put it into something different. So together we quilted it um, at a local quilt, um, a local long armor called Cosmic Quilting that she's in Laguna Hills. Uh, California. So if you look at the back of it here, it is all quilted with the cuddle, okay, which I love. And uh, oh yeah, you can see it really well. Good, good, good. I love, love, love long arming on cuddle. Um, it is just, there's so much texture that it gives it. It's so much better than a cotton back, if you ask me. <laughs> um, we have 90 wide cuddle, which is which works perfect for this, um, and uh, it just it shows up all of the quilting just beautifully. You saw those little circles in there are just fabulous. Um, so the quilt, the top, the, those wings up there are um, actually made out of a whole bunch of different scraps of cotton. Um, plus, the top of the wings are his old jeans. So we used. Um, just a pair of uh, jeans that Hawk had loved to death. And uh, I had patched them and patched them and patched them and they were kind of dead. So we made a pattern and we used that for the top and then we frayed the edges so that it's nice and soft um, and gives it a real lovely 3D. So then we made all these pieces. Each of the feathers are actually pieced out of about three different uh, cotton pieces for each of them. 
that I did some curve piecing and then cut out the applique of each feather. And then we thread painted on top of that as well. Yeah, so then we thread painted on top of it. Um, and we did the uh, Islam 12 point star up there at the top. And uh, it has a whole lot of, a whole lot of symbolic um, ness going to it, but it's really, it's a beautiful, beautiful quilt. I'm very happy with it. Um, but the reason we wanted to show it to you is one, I'm really proud of it and um, Hawk did a great job with it. But the quilting on it is really, um, honestly, if you haven't used it yet, if you haven't used Cuddle yet for it, um, oh, it's just so pretty, you guys. Um, you really should. So if you want to, um, okay, <laughs> are we ready? You want to go back upstairs? Sure. Okay, um, so if you want to find out more about the quilt, um, we have some stuff on um, my blog, and you can do that. But the best thing is actually to go to Instagram, and then if you do uh, hashtag Ascension Quilt, you'll find a whole bunch of pictures of people posing in front of it, which is, to me is like my favorite part of that whole process, was getting people to come in during the art show and take pictures of themselves posing in front of the quilt. Um, so you can do that. I also gave Ellen a link when we were on the quilt show. They took and um, made it into a puzzle. So you could do a puzzle and put the quilt together, which is pretty cool. So, so we're um, in my studio now. This is a black and white photo of the, the mural that I painted in um, my, the bedroom in my previous apartment uh, at the time that I met Teresa. And uh, this is all acrylic and house paint and the, basically the exact same color pattern that she then brought to the quilt. Uh, and then we started pulling reference material uh, and uh, were able to, to give some of these shapes to Karen over at Cosmic Quilting and mm -hmm. she was able to program that into the long arm. Yeah, uh, yeah. And then if you look here, here's the muslin pattern for the wings full size as so, the layout. Right, so and that's then, what he drew, and then I made those pattern pieces you saw downstairs right. based on this drawing. And then each one of the individual pieces we uh, created uh, with vellum or a, a parchment paper and added the seam allowances, and she, uh, Teresa, used at least three different fabrics to create each of those individual numbered pieces. So. It was a lot. It was a lot. It was a lot. It was a really lovely experience, though. It was super fun. And just to kind of give you an idea of what space is going on now, now we're above it, down in the living room. Or yeah. Down in the, down the kitchen. Go. Down yeah. the kitchen. Dining room. Dining room. Yeah. There we go. So that's the Ascension quote. Right. So, um, yeah. So All that's right. a little bit about the art that he does, the art that we've done together, um, which has really been super fun. Um, but honestly, like, I love being able to sort of combine all of these things together. Um, his art, my art, quilting, and um, my love of cuddle fabric now, too. So all of it has kind of come together and been a really uh, wonderful thing. So thanks for letting us share that. Did, and were there any questions that popped up there? Uh, how long did it take us to make that? Was oh, it, was we it made it pretty months? fast. Um, I think it was about three months. Um, yeah, it was probably about three months that it took us to do it. He had painted it quite a while before that. Um, the funny thing is, is that I travel a lot for work, and so I'm not home a lot. And um, the funny story is that I got a concussion at the beginning of that process, um, and so I couldn't travel. And so I was home. And, and weirdly, um, quilting is actually really good for um, brain injury recovery, and so we were able to sort of do that and help my brain start working a little bit better again. And, um, and then we got to show it and that was in April. So I guess, yeah, probably about three months total. I think we worked on it really hard for about six weeks cause I wasn't um, working full time at that point. So we got to stick it together really fast and it was great. And then, like I said, we got to help. So the long armor, she did the quilting for the Islamic stars at the top. And then we got to do the quilting for the other and she let us really um, participate in that, which was awesome. That was so, so much fun. Like I got to play on the long arm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So in case you didn't hear him, he said he got to play on the long arm. It was super fun. So it was great. Um, just a, really fun. So if you, haven't, if you haven't had the opportunity to do that, you totally should. Um, it's great. But combining the love of quilting and cuddle is really great. Um, yeah. And it's fun to combine it with, you know, Hawk and his art too. So, um, all right. Was that the biggest question? More? I think that's okay. Okay. 
Good, good. So if you have more questions, leave them. I'll get back to you uh, afterward. We'll, we'll both jump on uh, yeah. uh, to the comments afterwards. And, we can uh, answer. And fill in any blanks. Yeah, that sounds perfect. So we'll both do it. And um, thank you so much for coming. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll do it again. We'll finish up that um, little rustic horse, okay? And Or the little rustic horseshoe uh, nutty nag, and we'll finish him up. And you'll have a cute little stuffed animal. All right, so thanks so much for joining us. I really appreciate you being here. Don't forget to join us over on I Love Cuddle. And uh, until tomorrow, happy sewing. Bye. Thanks, Teresa. Yep. <laughs>